back everybody. I'm gonna do this real quick this morning because I got a lot of searching to do. I am on a massive body of water right now. <laughs> All thanks to that thing. I would not be out here without that. I'm like a mile and a half from shore this morning and I might be going like two, three, four, five miles of running around today. Those of you guys that understand, hit that like button, comment below for the algorithm. I really wanna keep that thing. Um, without it, I, I just couldn't do this kind of stuff. So there's a couple different species I'm gonna be chasing today. I have walleye, perch, uh, bluegills, and I might be able to find some white bass. I don't know, I'm gonna see what I can find. I'm in really deep water, so basically anything I catch today, I'll have to keep uh, and count towards my limit. Those of you guys that know, barotrauma basically kills everything. So if I'm fishing deeper than 28 to 30 feet of water, any deeper than 30 feet of water, almost everything dies. So I'm gonna try and find some fish real quick. Uh, if I'm catching really little ones, I'll probably move because I don't want to kill a bunch of little ones. But uh, yeah, wish me luck. Found a stack of fish. Let's hope they're what I'm after. Had to come in by a break line. Still on 66 feet of water, but if these are jumbos, that's okay. Hopefully they're a school of active fish. Got him. That felt big. Feels really big. Uh, this is a perch. It's a giant perch. <laughs> Might be the other one I was searching for. Yep. <laughs> Giant white bass. And that's why you gotta keep them. <laughs> Holy crap. Dude, that is that is legitimately like a freaking four pound white bass. <laughs> now that's a giant white bass. I'm gonna measure it real quick. I think it's like 17. It's only 16 and a half on a tape. So I think I've gotten 16s before. So just chunky. That thing is meaty. <laughs> Hopefully I can get some more of these guys. That's a lot of smoked fish. Okay. So this is gonna be a pain in the butt getting down on top of them again. That explains why they're fighting so hard, but yeah, I'll keep those guys all day, that's fine. I smoked all my other ones. If you guys haven't seen those uh, videos yet, because I, I have a couple different channels if you guys don't know. But uh, basically, I have a cooking channel, a clip channel, and then my vlog channel. Um, but yeah, my cooking channel, I'll put it up here. It's DWS Cooks Everything. I smoked a bunch of those white bass and I found out that they're really, really good. So goal here is going to be to try to get a dozen or so of them. I just got to somehow stay on top of them in this deep water, which is, I don't know, I, I feel like it's going to be a pain because like chasing them around isn't going to be the easiest thing to do without having like a mobile setup. Like I have my machine with me, but it's, <laughs> it's going to be way harder 
All right, let's see where they went. Okay, so they're they're 40 feet behind me now. So that's them right there. Hopefully they just stick in this area. It's also why I brought this guy with me today. Because this will let me hop around and stay on top of them. I don't have to grab the giant light live scope. That's just got to tell me the direction they're in. Yep, I'm on the edge of them here. The only thing that sucks is it's so shallow or so deep. Like killing these fish as they come up doesn't bother me as much because there's hundreds of millions of these guys. But uh, getting down to them is a pain in the butt. Especially if they keep moving. <laughs> I have a feeling I should just drill out a giant grid of holes around here. But I got to figure out if these guys are staying in this area or if they're following the brake line back and forth. Because they might just be piled up uh, actually eating perch and whatnot. These white bass eat everything. <laughs> so staying on top of them is going to be key here. Okay. So, yeah, I'm probably going to just end up drilling a bunch of holes here, but hopefully <laughs> hopefully the next thing you see is be getting a bunch more of those guys. Because that's a big white bass. Like, that's probably one of the biggest white bass I've ever caught. Found school again. <laughs> this thing is just cruising around in a big circle here, I think. So I'm just going to keep drilling holes, and hopefully, eventually, I won't have to drill any more holes. And, uh, yeah, just stay on top of them. Let's sit here and keep trying to pull, pull fish out of the top of this pack so that, so that they don't spook. Because <laughs> I think that's what happened the last time. But, yeah, this is a massive school of fish. Got one. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun if I could stay on these guys all day. restock my freezer <laughs> yeah if they're all that big oh that's what I forget hopefully I don't need my hemostat here that's two Did you guys look at that school <laughs> That school of fish is like 10 feet thick. And I mean, if they're all that big, there's thousands of pounds of fish down there. It's hard to get their attention. I wonder if they're feeding down on something or like in a group of minnows, maybe. Usually white bass are just like, they see the bait, they kill it. <laughs> I'd like to get more than one out of the school before it moves. Go down in the school a little bit here. Can't seem to get anybody's attention. <laughs> Go down deeper towards the bottom of the school. I think I got a big suspended perch. At least that's what I'm told is out here like this. <clears throat> Thing was like 38 feet down over 70 feet of water. Feels pretty good. Yep. <laughs> Man, this is a good day. <laughs> I haven't had a good day like this in a while. Um, so I'm gonna keep that guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a giant school of fish over here, and what I think it is, is I think it's white bass surrounding a uh, baby perch. So, so far we got two jumbo white bass and one jumbo perch. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to just drill out some extra holes around here and make it so that I can hop around on top of these fish.
And a bite. Just had to move a little bit here. that guy. I think that's another perch. Oh, never mind. He's getting heavier. <laughs> you white bass biting really light. Yep. Just a white bass bite really light. Barely nipping at it. Get a couple of them to come up out of the school. <laughs> that dude crushed it. That was so cool. <laughs> saw him coming up there was one looking at it screwing around and uh this dude kept coming up below and like darting back down and finally he just shot up this is why this is so much fun because when these guys get active like that like <laughs> i'm fishing 66 feet of water right now and that thing crushed it so hard it almost ripped a rod out of my hand I'm gonna have to <laughs> gonna have to get the, the hemo stats for that guy. He swallowed it. <laughs> Thud. Oh, he got a. It's okay. It looked like there's a bigger one down there. There we go, another good one. Feels like another monster. By the way, this is my commander. <laughs> this is my giant walleye rod. These guys are putting a good hurting on this thing. So I noticed I bring this guy up. There's another guy that came halfway up with him. So I think today is going to be you got to get a couple of them interested. <laughs> Almost lost that guy. Okay, I think it's time to move holes here. I think the secret with these guys is if you beat up the little single area too much, then you're not gonna, then you're like landing on the same fish. So they don't like that 15, 20 feet to the side of the school here. Let's see if that makes a difference. Trick that guy into it. Oh, he came off halfway up. That guy up hit me.
barely hooked. Gotta go down on the school for him now, it seems. Dude, they are getting bigger. <laughs> That's a huge white bass. Like a three pounder. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That dude hammered it. <laughs> so big. They're back under here. I always appreciate it that way when they let me sit down. <laughs> running around after these schools, running out of breath. I got like seven or eight giant white bass right now. I'm gonna fill my little cooler. Probably 25, maybe 30 <laughs> in the size that they are. Cause they're so big. <laughs> this school is active. It's such a nice day out too. <laughs> Look at these things. Look at the size of that. <laughs> you gotta find these guys this summer when it's uh, or spring, when it's time to cast for them. All right, let's see how many we can get out of this school over here. The longest part of this whole thing is getting down to them. It's like the hardest part. <laughs> Let's see if see if I can get these. There's a couple off the top here. They can get their attention. They're kind of big. That guy came up kind of quick out of the pack. So a tip I'll give you guys, aside from just not going down into the, the pack is get down close to it but then watch watch inside of it because sometimes um you'll see one shooting up from the very bottom so the top one will kind of be messing with you and the one from the bottom will come shooting up and take it from that guy i don't know if they're like competitive that way or if the ones on top sometimes are just not feeding <laughs> but this guy came in straight up from the bottom okay no bait on there let's see if, if I can catch them just plain jigging rip be nice because then if I didn't ever have to bait again I could just hop around and basically look to land on fish okay so stop it just above them 
snap it once or twice see if anybody comes up for it the coolest thing about catching white bass is they kind of act the same just about every body of water they're in when they're in lakes when they pile up you can use these same techniques basically over and over again yeah now they're getting shy they don't want to leave the group okay put some bait back on there now if a perch swims through hopefully I can catch it where did my son go <laughs> that sun was keeping me warm but I also think this that clouds coming in uh, basically made uh, made these fish turn on and kind of stay put because they're staying underneath me right now Oh, that was a hard hit. Well, hopefully you guys can see that. He'll probably come back. Usually guys that are that psycho go go again. Go down below him. Come back up. Set the hook on that guy kind of hard. <laughs> but I missed him the first time, so. Doesn't feel little. My wrist is going to be wore out by the end of the day. Which I'm okay with. Just your average two pounder. Yeah, and that guy, that guy just ate the end of it. Do you even matter if I had bait on there? That dude was gonna eat. What do I got? Got three so far out of this school that hasn't moved. It's kind of nice. Nice of them to sit right off of my my sled here so I could sit down and catch them oh that guy hit so hard he put you knocked a bunch of slack in my line oh that's too funny like I felt him hit and watched my my rod lift up as I was lifting it up like took all the bend out of my rod I don't know how they don't get hooks when you're fishing a jig and wrap and they do that. Oh, that thing feels bigger. Oh. Feels a lot bigger. <laughs> oh. Was this like the king of all white bass? <laughs> yep. Oh. Well, that's the biggest white bass I've ever caught. <laughs> Holy crap. Look at that monster. <laughs> Look at that giant. That thing is huge. Had this guy up and down like 10 or 12 times <laughs> apparently they're getting finicky
feels like another big one. Cause it is. <laughs> oh, these guys are so big. I bet you that one's longer than uh, 16. There's no way it's not. Well, just another 16 inch freaking white bass. That took way too much talking for a white bass. Maybe this school over here has the bigger fish in it. My other school left me, so I had to come out to my farthest hole. That's why I don't have the other camera going right now. But I'm okay with that as long as I can catch some more of these monsters. They are definitely fired up now. Funny, these guys do the bluegill circle when you're getting them up from this deep. I really need to buy a smoker. Okay, that's two over here. Let's see if they're all willing to play like that. That'd be fun. I'd like to get, I think I, I, think I can fit about six or seven more. Yep, yeah, these guys are racing now. Feeding time. And that guy is fighting hard. Missing an eyeball. <laughs> this dude's missing an eyeball. Got him. <laughs> The old double snap bouncing place. That guy hammered it too. <laughs> Nothing's more fun than when they're ready to just hammer it. Like he came in and circled it and I did the, you bounce it and then you pump it once so that, so that the thing shoots off. Shoots off to the side. So yeah, my camera died there, but uh, as I was trying to say, you pounce it, give it a couple good rips when they're coming up like that. And they hammer it just like that. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> So like when they're ripping up like really fast at it, you don't want to just stop. White bass don't want you to sit still. They really want it to just kind of dart away from them and they will snatch it like out of mid dart. That's the coolest thing about these guys. They will slam it out of a mid dart. Okay, that's five out of this school. Like I was saying before, I think I can only fit, I mean, when they're that big, I think I can only fit about maybe 10 more in my cooler. So if I get five more, I'm gonna take them back and see how I gotta cookie cutter them in there. But yeah, hopefully the little bounce technique really helps you guys. 
So I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> oh, that guy got off. Let's see if I can do it again though. Get down right over the top of them. Bounce, bounce, pull. So they, they seem to like that bounce right after initial fall. They let that guy go back down to the bottom. So there's one that was up looking at it. I pull it away. Let's see if this is what it is. Let it fall down. Bounce, bounce. Fall down, bounce, bounce. So what it's doing when you bounce it like that is it's darting off to the side. That's a really big one. Getting the school to come up higher now, so maybe I'll get some action. So that one I had to go below a couple times. Oh, it came off. Seriously, don't know how these guys can come unpinned. <laughs> but we'll see if the other guy that was with the one that came off comes back. Otherwise, just go back down. But yeah, I went down, up, down, past him, let him go down past it, and then came up again, and he came back and hammered it. So sometimes you got to yo-yo them a little bit. and I mean, they're white bass. If you yo-yo them right... <laughs> It's, I mean, it's just fun. You go down, they go down, you go up, they go up, and eventually you make contact. It's one of those times I wish I had a double hole. I'm gonna keep pulling that transducer out. Another giant. <laughs> oh. And just in case I forgot to say earlier, which I think I did, I'm using a number three clown jigging ramp. And then it's on my uh, tuned up customs commander. These two work really good for these uh, these big white bass. But uh, always have that clown jigging wrap. It works for everything. Perch, walleye, uh, white bass. I mean, works for everything. But uh, yeah, the number three size and the number two size are like, you can use them just about anywhere. Uh, bluegills eat the number two. So just a good tip for you guys. That's another big one. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Monster. How big are you? Another 16. A lot of 16s over here. Assuming we get this guy up, this would be number 10 for this spot. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Okay, gotta bring the cooler over and see if they fit in there. Okay guys, it's getting uh, <laughs> it's getting a little nasty out. It's supposed to get windy, it's supposed to storm. Um, I currently have an entire cooler full of white bass. I think I got about, it's, it's, if I remember right, when I fill the thing, it's either between 35 and 40 in this small cooler. Um, they're like perfectly pancaked up and like cookie cuttered into there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I could sit here and catch white bass all day, but I, I specifically use this cooler that I have as a like self limitation because I don't want to clean fish for like three hours. Um, obviously if I had like five or six coolers laying around and I had a dozen people out here, we could probably catch white bass in the thousands easily. Um, comment below if you want me to come back here and do this again before the end of the season. I'm probably going to do it regardless just because um, one thing, like I said before, if you guys were paying attention, I have a cooking channel um, and I've discovered this year that smoked white bass taste amazing. Um, they turn into these little snack sticks basically. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to collect as many as I can fit in my freezer. <laughs> so big thing when you're smoking fish is you got to freeze them for like two or three weeks. Um, I just do two weeks minimum and then I'm hoping to get a smoker this year. If I can get a smoker this year, I'm going to be smoking white fit or white bass all year. But uh, right now in the wintertime is the best time to collect it because it's nice and cold for meat. Um, and yeah, it's not all up in the warm, warm, mushy shallows. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it's going to be a little bit to edit, but it's worth it because this was really fun. Oh, and I forgot, I have one lone little perch in there that I'll just pan fry him up and throw him on like a sandwich or add him some eggs or something like that. He won't go to waste. I will eat him. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Remember to subscribe, hit the like button. I'll see you guys next time.